Okay, in this uh, video, I'm going to start, I think I see how many it takes to do this, but basically what I'm going to do is give a real quick step-by-step -step view of how to do a very simple finite element solver using uh, the Strength Wizard in NX. So, um, first you have to run NX, it's in all the engineering computer labs. It, if you want to, uh, you can also go to the following site the etc.utep.edu slash labs slash virtual.htm and uh, set up a virtual connection to the labs. So if you're at your home computer, you can use this to um, connect. Um, in fact, that's what I'm doing here on my desktop, all right? So the first thing you need to do is start up NX, which will take a little while. I probably should have started that up to begin with. So we're going to do NX6. This goes under the typical help thing. Now, while this is starting, I should just talk a little bit about finite elements. So, you know, finite elements has pretty much become synonymous with doing analysis or stress analysis in the engineering environment uh, for a lot of reasons. You can apply a variety of boundary conditions, geometries, so on and so forth. Uh, that being said, it doesn't eliminate the need for doing hand calculations like we're focusing in this class. Uh, they go hand in hand. You need to do one to check the other. Uh, finite element methods tend to have a little more resolution to them or refinement. Um, let's see if this worked. And But the hand calculations are a lot faster and less error prone, especially when you're first starting. Uh, but we'll do some real simple ones in this class. If nothing else, to get you uh, exposed to it and then when you take uh, fine elements as a senior or a junior you'll have a little exposure to it but also it'll help uh, enforce some of the concepts uh, we're talking about in this class with regard to bending torsion and then when we talk about stress transformations uh, um, more circle and uh, combined loading I think things will make a lot more sense okay now for this one, we can also start to see some of the stuff with regard to end condition effects, things like we talked about with um, Solvinol's principle. Okay, so here's NX. It started. Let's go full screen. It takes up a lot of windows. I believe everybody in this class probably should have had a CAD class with NX. If not, there's lots of help and tutorials in NX through Documentation Center to uh, get up to speed and uh, I cannot quite go through that but what we're gonna do first of all is build a very simple part so let's open up a new file so we'll do new it's gonna be a part so we're gonna click model and we'll use millimeters so make sure it's in millimeters okay units to millimeters we can just call it model one I will say though you will not be able to save in this default directory so why don't you save it in your desktop so I'll save it to my desktop I'll just call it model one you can call it whatever you want it takes a little while to load so we're going to basically create a, a block and load it in uniaxial tension and we'll see uh, some of the end effects and we'll see that you know we should get the same stress in the middle of the specimen as we would get from doing the simple P over A calculation. Okay, um, so let's make a, a block. So this is relatively easy. Insert, well, I should say one thing. Sometimes you'll go in here and you'll see the insert design features and it'll have a limited menu, right? So again, uh, the trick for this is to go under this rolls and pick advanced with full menus. It's this one. And now when you do that, Always, that's what I always do. You get more icons, and here under Insert Design Feature, you'll see Block. So we'll make a block. The block window pops up. Let's make the length in the X direction um, 150 millimeters. We'll make the width of the block um, 40 millimeters, and then the height of the block will be 10 millimeters. And you can just position it at the origin. It's going to be a simple part, so that's pretty much it. All right. So here's our part. We're done. Okay? This is uh, not a very complicated part. 
You can obviously do the same approach I'm going to do here on more complex parts. It goes the same way. That's the beauty of the final element method. But for our purposes, we'll just deal with something simple. We can get the exact solution on this. What we'll do actually is put a um, two kilonewton load on this end, which will result in a stress of uh, five megapascals. Okay, um, so like I said, I'm sorry, I had a little visitor at the door, so I had to pause there, but uh, we'll put a um, two kilonewton force on this end and we'll fix on the other end. So that'll effectively should give us a um, stress of two, of, I'm sorry, five megapascals because this cross sectional area should be 400 meters, 400 millimeters squared, okay, or 400 square millimeters. All right, so actually it's really easy to do this. Uh, you don't have a lot of control over this, but the nice thing about it is you can get a ballpark uh, number or stress number relatively quickly. So the way we do the strength wizard is you go up here to analysis and you move down and you'll see strength wizard. Click on that. And now this will take you through step by step uh, the things you need to do to do the analysis. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a simulation file. This is the file that's going to hold the boundary conditions. These are the things like the material properties also, uh, but the boundary conditions like what faces the loads are on, how much those loads are, what are the constraints. You can use the same simulation file to do other analyses so you can save them separately. Uh, most likely you don't have one already, so we'll create a new one. So you hit create. Now this is kind of the important step. To get this to work fully in uh, NX, make sure you pick NX NASTRAN design. This is your template. Okay, make sure you pick this. If you pick the NASTRAN, it might not work fully in uh, NX or, or the other ones, okay? All right, so we do that. Hit OK. Now it'll load the simulation file in with your model file. That's what it's doing now. I think this icon will change to simulation up here at the start. Maybe, maybe not. No, it didn't, but anyway. Okay. But actually, when it does this, it generates a couple of different files. Okay. Um, so now we're done with this. We do OK. And now it's going to take you through the steps. So the first thing you have to do is define a material. It recognizes one solid in the model, and so it says this is what you're going to analyze. So, so yes, that's what we're going to do. So you do next. Uh, to do the analysis, it has to know what material your, the part is made of. So the first thing it'll do is ask you what type of material it is. You can pick plastics, others, um, like epoxy, ABS, nylon, but we'll do metal. Let's do the old standard. We'll do aluminum, 6061. That's a standard aircraft uh, aluminum gauge. Hit next. That will make this body be out of aluminum. Now we're going to go to the two steps. There's two major steps that you have to deal with. The first step is defining where the loads are applied. The second step is finding or defining how the body's constrained, where it's fixed. Okay, And you need to do both. All right. And you can have multiple forces and multiple fixation points. Uh, the finite element method solves statically determinate and statically indeterminate problems in exactly the same manner. Okay? So first we're going to apply some forces. Uh, you can apply forces onto a face, onto a line, or onto a whole body. So that would be like for gravitational forces. Well, we're going to apply a force onto a face. So we pick face. Now it asks you to pick which face. We're going to pick this right face, this positive X face. Okay. You can add more than one face, but we're just going to use that one. Hit next. Do you want to have a force that's distributed over that? A pressure. You can also use if you have, if you selected cylindrical surfaces, you could apply a torque or a bearing load, like it's a pin, uh, or on a body you can do um, a gravitational force, but we're going to do a force. So pick, click on force, hit next, uh, enter the magnitude of the force, it's in newtons, so we're going to do 2,000 newtons, and you also have to define the direction. 
So if you just pick the face, it'll kind of um, assume you want to do it in the outward normal, and that's what we're going to do. You can flip the direction if you want. You can also pick edges to define the direction, but, but this is fine. We want to make sure that we have the outward pointing direction there. Once you get that, you hit next. So now a force is defined there. It actually is going to define a dis distributed load whose total magnitude is that 2,000 newtons. All right, you could apply other forces uh, on other faces, edges, bodies, so on and so forth. In this case, we're done. So we're not going to define any more forces, so you just simply hit next. That'll bring you to the next step, the constraint definition panel, okay? So here you can see the icon changed a little bit. We're going to apply constraints. Now constraints can be applied on faces or edges. And again, we're going to apply it on a face, on that back face. So let's rotate it a little bit. We're going to pick this back face, hit next, and now it's going to say what type of constraint do you want to apply, a fixed constraint or a sliding constraint. So a sliding constraint would be like on rollers. So basically that would constrain this face from only moving the x direction, but it could slide up and down in the y and z directions. So we'll make it fixed. So click on fixed, and then hit next. And it puts these little x's here to indicate that it's fixed. And again. You can add more constraints, uh, but we're done. So then you simply hit next. So now we've add, we've defined the forces, we've defined all the constraints. So we're ready to go. We're ready to perform the simulation. So you just cl cl simply click perform simulation. This will go through. It'll estimate an appropriate finite element mesh size. It'll use sort of a second order elements, which are good standard elements for most analyses. Uh, It'll write a uh, input file for NASTRAN. It'll call NASTRAN to solve it. And then it'll take the files from NASTRAN and import them into NX to look at the results. Okay? So you see at this point, it says we, we ran this. It was uh, successfully completed. Uh, click on the background, and you'll get this other one, this uh, name parts thing to come up. This uh, tells you, uh, I think what it's doing here is it's telling you where to import the results. So just click OK on that window. I think you can close this one out. This is just the dialog window. And what, you should, what you'll get here is uh, the results. So now we have a little wizard window here to help figure out. We can look at stresses, uh, displacements. Uh, I believe also reaction forces. Um, so you can also animate your results, like you could pick displacements, and you can animate it, and you can see how it's deforming. I believe I can even slow it down a little bit. Now let's pull this panel off so we can see things a little better. Okay. Can we move you? Trying to move the panel. Okay, so what you can see here is, uh, you know, this is kind of just cycling through the undeformed to the deformed configuration. So you can see a couple things. You can see it elongating, and you can also see the Poisson effect. So it's con contracting laterally. The other thing to note is that because we fully fixed the edge, there is no way for it to contract on the edge. So you're you're not getting, um, you know. It's, it's not free to contract laterally on the fixed support side. Okay. Um, so that's fine. Let's, let's stop the animation. I think you should be able to slow it down. I'm not sure exactly how to do that. This is the one problem with using the, the virtual lab part. Is Sometimes it's a little difficult to get these things to, to move. Like a delay. Let's see if we do display options. Well, let's stop this. Let's stop the animation. See how long that takes. So, what we're interested in here is the check is, is we want to look at, well, while it's doing this, I can show you what's going on here. It's uh, the coloration here is. Um, the displacement, and it's the magnitude of the displacement. 
most of the displacement here is in the um, x direction. Okay, and you can see what's going on here. Let me rotate it a little bit. I'll get a top view. And you can see what I mean when I say uh, here's the Poisson effect. It narrows down, uh, but at these edges. Um, we don't see that because obviously it's fully constrained there. The numeric values tell you how much it's displaced. So the maximum value at this tip is this uh, 0.9 times 10 to the minus 3 millimeters. Okay. You can also look at other things like the stresses. Okay. And here we're looking at the stresses. All right, and what you can see here is in the middle region, we have stresses um, from the coloration uh, right around this five megapascal range, all right, which is where you would expect. If you just do the hand calculation for P over A, you'll find that it should be five megapascal. Now, there are some higher stresses, a little over five, and there are some lower stresses. So they occur not surprisingly, at this end condition, okay? Because again, remember from uh, the notion of Saint-Venant's principle that when you're near the points where the boundary conditions are applied, the details of those boundary conditions will affect the stress field. As you move away from it, the stress field will tend to approach the um, idealized P over A stresses. And that's what we're seeing here. Okay. All right, you can also do some display options for the stresses. You can give it like a relative displacement. You can see it like in the deformed mode. And again, you can see where we're getting this deviation from the ideal elastic, I mean, axial state of stress is where we change. I think I can also usually sometimes allows you to pick points and you can see what this where the stresses are. Okay, so actually the max goes almost to 6 and the min goes down to 2, okay? And that's all in this region, okay? But the far field approaches the 5 really well. Okay, well that's pretty much all I want to show. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do uh, for a, an exercise is actually to go through this and try some different end conditions and some different geometries and see how your stresses, the max stresses, compare to the stresses you get from a hand calculation, okay? Uh, you can also do like a report and this will generate a, uh, a nice HTML type of report for you. You can put in your name, UTEP, and this will give you sort of a summary of your results, okay? All right. Conclusion, you can even put in animated stresses in there if you want. Let's see what it's doing. Plus, okay, that's the view you want. Okay. Just asking you for pictures to take. And then you'll see. I think it generates an HTML report. No, it didn't like it. Okay, I don't know what happened. But anyway. All right, well, that's it. And again, uh, I'll give you some exercises to try this as well, okay? And obviously, the nice thing about this is you can do the same approach with a more complicated part where your, you know, back envelope P over A calculations may not be as accurate, okay? Thank you.